Hello, everybody. I'm Mike King, and welcome to Profiling Evil Reacts. Two weeks ago, Sarah Olson learned that her missing five-year-old son, Samuel Olson, had been recovered in a Jasper, Texas motel room. Sadly, the missing child was deceased. Now, her estranged husband's girlfriend, Teresa Balboa, had allegedly rented the motel room and was there with the body at the time police arrived. Balboa was later arrested for tampering with evidence and is expected to face more charges in the boy's death. Samuel's body was taken to the medical examiner's office for examination. Well, in her first press appearance, Sarah simply said, I'm holding up. It's hard. I'm taking it day by day. She said, no one ever expects anything like this to happen, and she's trying to understand things. Let's listen to this part of the news conference and hear her words. I'm holding up. I just, you know, it's hard. I'm just taking it day by day. Um, nobody ever expects something like this. I'm still in trying to, you know, understand things. Well, you might recall Sarah was painted as the last person who had custody of the child. That was a flat out lie perpetuated by Balboa, who reported that Sarah and a uniformed police officer took custody of the child on May 27th. It, it simply never happened. And the Houston police department wasted valuable time chasing that false lead. Now, they would later confirm that Sarah had nothing to do with Samuel's disappearance. Sarah Olson described how her husband Dalton took custody of Samuel in January of 2020. Let's listen to part of Sarah's comment yeah, um, at press conference. Dalton took Sam last January in 2020 and never returned him. Um, actually told me that I would never speak to him again. And um, yeah, I, I called police after police trying to figure out what I could do and it was a civil matter. So I had to take it to court and you know, things can be slow. Well, Sarah's attorney, Marco Gonzalez, mentioned that the courts had been slow in reacting to Sarah's petition for custody blaming it on part on the coronavirus disease disruption. Public records show that the Division of Family Ch and Child Services won't release any information on the case publicly, and there have been some media reports that suggest Dalton may have surrendered custody to his mother, but I haven't seen anything that would support that. What we do know is the false report made by Balboa was that Sarah supposedly came to her mother-in-law's or Dalton's mother's house. The interesting bombshell that was leveled by Sarah is that Dalton knows more than he's telling. Sarah remarked that with all of the evidence that's been brought to life, how is he not involved? Sarah goes on to say that she believes the police have all the information they need. And as far as charges, she believes that they know what they're going to do next. Let's now listen to this recording by KPRC2 News. I just, I believe the police have all the information that they need. And as far as charges, they, they know what they're going to do. Sarah made a point of saying the couple broke up 17 months ago. And the last time she saw Samuel was on his birthday in May of 2020. That's more than 13 months ago. I mean, is this bothering anyone else? I have so many stinking questions that remain unanswered in this case. I, we know that the medical examiner uh, indicated that Samuel died of blunt force trauma. We know that the child died on or about May 10th in Balboa's Houston area apartment. Now, we also know that Balboa and her roommate placed the child in the apartment's bathtub for several days while they thought of how they might dispose of the body. And then we know that they went to an area Walmart store where they purchased a large plastic storage container, black plastic. 
and duct tape. We know that after placing the child in the container uh, back at the residence, they then drove to a nearby storage locker, and there Samuel sat in the hot Texas temperatures. And we know that the body was transported to Jasper, Texas, where it was discovered by police. Now, we believe, based on public reporting, that Balboa intended on crossing state lines into Louisiana. Here are some of my personal concerns. Here are some of my personal concerns. I'm deeply troubled that Sarah didn't have a better handle on where her child was, who had custody of the child, and what the plan of action was to protect the child and ensure that he had access to both parents. Samuel deserved to have both parents in his life. Somehow, and to some degree, that should have been provided through court decisions. Now, there have been some public reports that Dalton's mother had guardianship of Samuel. If that's truly the case, why did Balboa have him for weeks? And why wasn't anyone checking on him? I'm deeply troubled that Samuel's father reported that he had no contact with Samuel from May 10th when it was reported he died to May 27th when he and Balboa reported this cockamamie story that Sarah and the police had seized the child. Even if he believed Balboa's story, why hadn't he questioned or reported Samuel missing in the two weeks that preceded May 27th? I mean, really, if, if Samuel died on May 10th, Dalton would have gone two weeks without seeing his child. What was going on during that time? Now, I don't know the answers to these questions, but I can tell you I see huge, glaring red flags. Why didn't the grandparents report Samuel's disappearance if they truly were his guardians? Why didn't Balboa's roommate report Balboa's admission that Samuel was dead on May 10th? Why didn't the roommate notify police that he or she helped conceal the boy's body? And why would it take the roommate or this other person a trip to Jasper, Texas to finally say enough is enough? Well, I suspect there are other charges coming down in this case. And while we wait for this other shoe to drop, Samuel Olson remains in a Houston morgue awaiting another parental custody battle. The argument's no longer who exercises control over the child. It now boils down to whether Sarah will get her wish of having Samuel cremated. Dalton has yet to decide. And so little Samuel Olson continues to wait, remaining a pawn in this perplexing and ever-developing criminal case. So here's my question for you. What do you think will happen in this crazy case? I'm going to be watching for your comments down below, and I hope you'll take a moment and hit the like and the subscribe button. Please ring the bell and, and get notified when we release other content like this. Now, thanks for supporting Profiling Evil. We'll see you soon at the next crime scene.